Welcome back to Snowrunner, guys, and in this video, we're going to be looking at a very interesting truck. Now, this is Red's 1991 Dodge Ram Charger that is actually built as a tribute to the version that Spun built in Mudrunner back in 2015. So, it's a really, really cool truck, really cool setup. Now, I will say, though, just to clarify, since this is a private mod, a private access mod, unfortunately, it is PC only. It's not on consoles. However, for you PC guys out there, this would definitely be an interesting one to look at and you can actually get a little bit more info on this truck um, via the link to Red's Discord which I have in the description down below. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and pick this thing up. We'll build it, we'll take it for a little run at truck night and we'll run it on the main course and we'll also run it on the side trail, kind of go through the options and features a little bit and just see what it's all about. So let's head straight into the customization. Now right off the bat, I do have to say it looks awesome. You can actually see the headers coming down like into the fenders and literally just, it goes to basically just a, <laughs> just a open header dump pipe right underneath the rocker panel right there. So that's, that's fun. Full cage, racing seats. The cage actually comes through the body. So if you are a fan of truggy style rigs that also have a little bit of like personality to them or aren't really built all that often, this thing is a perfect candidate for that. So, you have one engine option, and that is the 440 V8. You have just a single gearbox option, custom gearbox, and you have a single suspension option. It's basically all sorted out there for you. Now, you do have some interesting tire options, though. You have a 38-inch Interco IROC, 38-inch uh, Interco Bogger. All of the all of the tire sizes are 38 inches, so you don't really have to uh, you don't really have to think about oh, am I going to have the right size or not? You only get one size, but you get a big range of tires. Up next, you have cut TSL Swampers. Nitto Trail Grapplers, you have this original SketchUp tire, and then you have a 38-inch Pitbull as well as a Trepidor. So, a lot of tire options, actually. A lot of different tire options. I think, I know I always go with the Pitbulls. I think on this one, I'm actually going to go with the Boggers. I think the Boggers will be a good choice for the main truck night course. I'm going to go with the Extended Autonomous Scout, and then I'm going to go with a, let's see, well, eh, they're all kind of I'm going to go with the tall, uh, tall mushroom snorkel. Now, you can do a cap. You can also do a spare tire, which I think looks really, really good. You can do a spare and fuel. You can also do a toolbox. I'm going to try and do a combination. So let's try toolbox, spare and fuel, and cap as well. Well, I tell you what. First up, we'll do the cap, and then before we do a trail with it, we'll bring it back, and we'll take the cap off. And I'm actually, you can, you can do both spares. You can do all the add-ons at once. That's really cool. Now... Uh, miscellaneous add-ons, you can do single-tone paint or two-tone paint. I think I'm going to leave this one single-tone, uh, doors single-tone. Yeah, that'll work for me. Then, let's see, roof lights, uh, beacons and fog lights, roof fogs. I'm going to just do, uh, the cab lights. I think they look really cool. And you got two bumper and rock sliders. I'm doing both because both of those will be very effective. And then, oh, you can actually change the color of the beadlock ring. That is so cool. That's so cool. I love that. I absolutely love that. I'm going to do the red beadlock ring. And then now, in terms of colors, you have a full range of color options to choose from. And I actually really like this sort of gray. I think it really fits the idea of the truck, the style of the truck, and the attitude of the truck. You can also throw beans on the dash, which I absolutely love. And I think we're going to probably throw dice in this thing. Even though it doesn't have a mirror, you just hang them from the cage. And with that being said and done, let's go ahead and head out to the main truck night course and see how it drives. That sounds so good. That sounds so good. Yeah, that sounds really, really good. All right. Three, two... Get the dev tools out of the way. One, go. Actually gets out of the gets gets off the line pretty good. Coming over the first jump into the mud. Let's see how those boggers do. Really well. Holy crap. Really well. Now, high range will only get you so far, and since it is a switchable diff truck and not a diff always on truck. You do have to kind of keep that in mind and sort of factor that in when you're driving it. Because, again, um, since it is a switchable diff and not a always-on diff, uh, you have to plan out when and where you're going to use high and just make sure it's not somewhere that you need the lockers. But even then, I mean, it's not like 
It's not like the truck does badly with the lockers off. I mean, look at that. It just stormed through there in high. No problem at all. And can I also say, I find it really cool that we're not picking up any... Susp I, I say, as, as I say, we're not picking up any suspension damage. We pick up some suspension damage. But either way, it has only picked up one unit of suspension damage, which is pretty impressive considering the fact that most trucks through there in high will pick up a lot. So let's back it up and we'll grab one of these Chevy 1500s. Get out of here! Oh, that is not the right winch point. Holy cow. Wait, do we not have one on the back? Or is it just the quick winch being silly? No, we have a bunch of them on the back. We don't have a central one on the back, though. So that's a little iffy. I wish we had a central one, but not really a big deal. It'll definitely pull the rest of this little, uh, this little challenge from there. I just kind of prefer to have it there. But I get why he did it, because that's where the actual tow uh, rings are. The actual tow hookups. Whoa! I wonder if it'll pull it through the pond in high without letting up. Come on, Ram Charger. Let's go. Easy. Not bad. Really not bad. Putting the power down really well. As long as you move the steering wheel around just a little bit and you help that front axle find its grip, you'll be fine and, and you won't get hung up on the... Whoa. Wow. I let all the way off the throttle and then got back onto it in high going up a hill with weight behind me and it didn't even complain that's very impressive all right crawling time now this is the part that i really was excited about for this because knowing what it was based on back in mud runner that thing was a crawling beast and so i really want to see how this thing's crawling abilities are and i can already tell you the rock grip is pretty tremendous now i am asking a lot of it right there and so i understand why it's given me a little bit of an issue but all that should take is a little bit of line adjustment. Let me see if I can get it to rotate around just to where I... Really? Well, maybe if I walk it to the right a little bit. Even then... Whoa! It just... Oh, man. It kept trying and trying and trying. Just give it just a tiny little winch bump because I'm sure we could find a better route there, but I didn't want to stay at that obstacle for a super long period of time, so... Ooh, it might be in trouble if I go straight off right there. Easy. Yeah, it's going to be in trouble if I go off right there because that rock ledge is super sharp. You do have to think in a realistic way when you're using this thing, and that's for sure. I think I'm going to just try to go to the right. Try and pull myself over there just a little bit. Not too much, but just enough to kind of, just enough to kind of recenter my truck. And then I'm going to go up right here because I see lots of iffy things happening if I was, if I try to go the original way I was going to go. Now this, it should have no problem climbing, especially if I ease the front end up onto it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. Gets it done. Gets it done easy too. Real easy. All right. I'm going to throw it back into auto. Up and over, and let's go. Oh my god, come on. Come on, there she goes. Not bad. Let's go on the one on the far left. We never take that one. Like, we literally never, ever take this one. I'm not sure why. Not because it's not a good bridge. Not because there's anything wrong with it. We just, like, never take it for some reason. You can actually get a little jump out of it if you give it some speed. There you go. All right, let's see how it reacts to the logs in high. Whoop. Didn't even mean to go all the way to the edge, but I'll do these last two in low with the lockers on just to show you guys how effortlessly it gets over them if you have your lockers on. This is like quarter throttle and just easy crawls it right over. Not even a hair of difficulty. Dude, look at that suspension working. This could literally double as, like, a Baja suspension. Wow, that's one of the most absorbent suspension setups I've seen go through that section in a long time. That's really, really good. Like, really, really good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and recover to the garage real quick. And now we're going to do a little bit of trail testing. So before we do a little bit of trail testing, I'm actually going to swap out the tire type. And I'm going to actually try out the trail grappler because I do like the trail grapplers. I think they're a really good tire. I've actually had really good experience with trail grapplers in real life on a couple of my buddy's rigs. 
Uh, they seem to be a really good all-round tire. Now, they're not necessarily the best mud tire, and they're not necessarily the best rock tire either, but they do sit in, like, a really, really nice in-between where they're obviously going to be way better off-road than an AT, but, you know, they're not so off-road dedicated like a TSL or something that they're going to be terrible on the road. So let's see, uh, let's just see how it does with them on the rock trail. This thing just really does feel so realistic and so well put together. One of the best realistic builds I've seen in a very long time. Red absolutely knocked it out of the park with this thing. This is all like half to quarter throttle. Just trying to get it to find the grip. Find the grip. And then there are going to be some occasions where you may have to bump it, but... You know, even when you do... Oh, okay, alright. That's, that's gonna be a little temperamental then, I guess. Okay. Oh, come on. Come on. Alright, you're gonna be real temperamental with that then, I guess. It's probably just, like, the wheelbase not liking how I was uh, how I was going after that particular obstacle. There we go, it just hops right up. Just hops right up without issue. Now, as we continue to walk down this trail, there is a mud section right here, which will be interesting to see how it does in the mud, and I also like that it's not on a ridiculously huge tire. I mean, a 38 is a big tire, don't get me wrong, but it's not like you're running 46s or something that feels outlandish, you know? That's a little bit harder, I feel like, for people to relate to, because if you're talking about people that have, you know, real off-roaders, real, um, real off-road rigs that they drive to the trail and then drive home again, you're gonna be looking at you know, anything between 33-inch tires to 40-inch tires. 40 is about kind of the cap that I see people using realistically. I mean, now I, you know, I do see Jeep JLs and Jeep Gladiators with 42s driving around on the street, but most of the ones that I see that are, you know, that are double duty daily drivers slash weekend trail rigs are running either a 37 or a 40. So let's go easy down through here. This section is tricky because it's very easy for you to get off balance and roll over. So that's why I like to try to set myself up sort of to the inside. This might not like it though, we'll see. That slides down, that's good. Hanging on the diff's pretty bad. Let me give it just a little bit of winch encouragement there, there we go. Just a little bit of winch encouragement. But, and this trail does have a lot of steep angles, but man, that flex looks great. The way this thing flexes out, my God, you cannot argue with how well this thing flexes out. It flexes out great. It really does flex out incredibly well. Now, if you guys enjoyed this look at this truck, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video and you would like to see more like this, make sure you are subscribed and have those notifications turned on. That's going to do it for this video, guys, and I'll see y'all next time.